What would you do if we lost power for an entire month? A year? Forever? While this might seem like a dystopian nightmare, it could actually happen. The culprit? Well, it's out of our control and out of this world. On September 1st, 1859, amateur astronomer Richard Carrington noticed some interesting sunspot activity. What are sunspots? They're darker, cooler areas on the sun's photosphere, the part of the sun we see with visible light. Carrington projected an image of the sun onto a wall and made sketches like this one. He first saw an extremely bright band between A and B, which then traveled to C and D over the course of five minutes before disappearing. What happened across the world after that was, well, shocking. Sparks were seen raining down from telegraph wires. Telegraphers' fingers were burnt by the electrical charge. All wasn't bad, though. So what was that bright band that Carrington saw? It was actually the first recorded observation of a solar flare. Let's take a look at what exactly a solar flare is and why it caused so much mayhem back in 1859. Sunspots are caused by the sun's magnetic field. As magnetic activity increases, the field lines stretch and twist. They go too far and, like opening a shaken soda, the solar material gets launched into space. In the case of the flare, this happens quickly. The Carrington event was only five minutes. That solar material and radiation interact with Earth's magnetic field, pushing our leading field lines back. Some of the material follows the field lines down toward the poles, which then collides with our atmosphere to create a brilliant spectacle called an aurora. Speaking of auroras, the northern ones are normally seen in the regions around here. But during the Carrington event, they were seen as far down as Cuba, around here. Now events like this are rare, but could we handle a Carrington level event? Let's take a look at what happened in 1989. In 1989, a large solar storm hit the Earth and, like Carrington, created some spectacular auroras. Unfortunately, it also caused a lot of damage. The U.S. experienced over 200 power grid issues in just a few minutes. It also killed power to the entire Quebec province for nine hours, and many didn't have power for several days. Above the Earth, 1,500 satellites slowed down due to atmospheric drag. Many lost communication with Earth and tumbled out of control. Now this storm was only a third as powerful as Carrington and caused this much damage. Thankfully, we learned from the event and have made some important changes. We now have several NASA missions monitoring solar activity. With the heads up they give us, we can put satellites to sleep and shut down electrical grids so they don't get overloaded. But as long as we keep funding NASA and keep improving our infrastructure, we should be able to survive a Carrington-level event. If the sun decides to throw us an even greater storm, well, let's just hope it doesn't. That's it.